Have you been asked to put transactions into a general journal and you're not sure what to do? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm Professor Capco and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that in today's video. But first, I want to say I believe something great is going to happen for you today. All right, we're going to journalize some transactions. We're going to put them into something called a general journal that looks something along these lines. They may look differently, but this is the general structure. Usually there'll be a place for the date. There'll be a place to put descriptions and the accounts. There might be an, a line or a space to put in a reference number. Maybe each transaction has a reference number. I don't have that here, but you could have that and also then we'd have debits and credits because we're going to be doing debiting and crediting it is super important that you understand whether particular accounts need to be debited or credited so to help you with that i have a prior video that i've linked up here so if you're not sure if something is a debit or credit take a look at that one first and then come back here and we can journalize some transactions and by the way, if you want to pick up your own general journal like this, you can practice. Uh, I'll have a link down in the description so you can get your own official Professor Capco general journal. Thank you. If you're someone who finds accounting confusing, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. That way I'll know and the YouTube algorithm will know that you could use some more videos like this one. Thank you. All right, I got some example transactions here that we're going to put into our general journal and we're going to take them one at a time. So let's take a look at the first one. The first one occurs on January 1st and the company issued 5,000 shares of common stock in exchange for $25,000 cash. So the company is receiving the cash and it is issuing to the investor the common stock, the 5,000 shares of common stock. So we're going to go ahead and record that in our journal. The date is January 1st, so I'll just put that as 1 1. And we always record the debits first. Always record whichever account is debiting first, and the debits are going to be left justified. In other words, they're going to be you're going to start the writing over here to the far to the left as you can and then credits come after all the debits for the transaction and we always indent that slightly to show because and it's easy to remember because the credits over here and the debits to the left of that so you can remember the debits going to be first and to the left and then any credits are going to be indented to the right i'll show you what i mean since our first transaction we're receiving $25,000 cash, that means our cash account, which is an asset, is going up. So we're debiting that. So I'm going to put our debit first, which is cash. And we're going to debit it for $25,000. Next, we're going to issue common stock. I'm not going to put in the description here at this point the number of shares because we're just going to put down the value. So I'm going to put down common stock and you see I'm indenting it. So I've gone to the next line. I've indented it. It's the same transaction so I don't need to write the date a second time. And the value, I'm going to put the value of the common stock here. And that's the 25,000. And these are dollar figures. We're always going to be debiting and crediting dollar figures. It's not going to be the number of shares. It's going to be the value. And that's the amount here. And our debits and our credits always have to balance. So there may be more than one debit. There may be more than one credit in a transaction. But ultimately, all your debits have to balance with all of your credits. If it doesn't, you've got something missing. It's good to go ahead and put a description here. I put it in parentheses. Just say issued 5,000 shares of 
common stock. So just some sort of description is a good practice. So we've taken care of the first transaction. I like to check it off when I'm done with it. The second transaction uh, is again on January 1st, we paid January rent of $800. So again, we have a tr cash involved in the transaction, but in this case, our cash is going down because we're paying it. If cash is part of the transaction, I always like to think about that one first because it helps me know whether I'm debiting or crediting. Since cash is an asset, I know it goes up with debits and goes down with credits. So I know that I'm going to credit cash for 8,000. So I can, I know that that's going to be a credit. So that's going to be my second entry. I always start with the debits. So what do I debit? Well, we're paid rent. We paid rent for January. So we have an account and I'm going to put the date here, one, one called rent expense. and our rent expense was $800. So I'll debit my 800, and I know my cash went down by 800, and I'm gonna line it up here with that indent. My cash goes down, so I'm gonna credit it for the same $800. My debits and credits balance, so we're ready to go on. All I need to do is put in my description, paid January rent. So far, so good. All right, let's go ahead and slide this up so you can, we can have some room and I can check off that second transaction. The next transaction on January 2nd, I purchased $2,000 worth of equipment for cash. So again, cash is involved and I know that cash is an asset. It goes up with debits and down with credits. We're paying cash out. So that means our cash is going down. We're gonna credit cash. So I need to know what the, the debit's gonna be. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the date here, January 2nd. So one, two, and we purchased equipment. Equipment is an asset and it goes up with debit. So I'm gonna go ahead and debit equipment. For the price we paid, the $2,000. And now I'm gonna credit my cash. Again, I'm, credits come second and they're indented and that's for the full 2000. I'm going to put a description purchased equipment. And again, if there's a reference number for the transaction, we'd add that in here. Go ahead and slide it up and we can check off that transaction. The next one is on January 3rd, we purchased $5,000 worth of inventory on credit, on credit. So there's no cash involved in this transaction. So I'm gonna put the date down, one, three, and we purchased the inventory. So the inventory is coming to us. Inventory is an asset and it increased. So I'm gonna debit inventory. I'm going to debit it for the full price that we paid, the 5000 And then since we paid credit, we paid for it on credit, I'm going to indent, and that's going to be a credit of two accounts payable. Accounts payable. And that's going to be for the same $5,000 and we can see our transaction balances and that's his purchased inventory on credit. Some of these descriptions are self-explanatory, but it's good to go ahead and put in some sort of description. Let's do our next transaction is January 4th. We purchased a delivery truck for $30,000. We paid $5,000 down and the rest on credit. So part of this is cash. We paid $5,000 cash. Our cash is going down because we're paying it out. So therefore we're gonna credit cash. So we're gonna look at what we're gonna debit and what we're gonna credit. 
our truck, our delivery truck is an asset. So again, I'm going to put the date here, 1-4, and we're going to delivery truck. I'm going to go ahead and put that on the books, and I'm going to put it for the full value of the truck, the purchase price, which is 30000 So delivery truck, I debit 30000 That's an asset. I'm going to credit cash. So I'm going to indent here and credit cash. And we paid 5000 for it, or 5000 down. We can see that our debits and credits don't balance. We got 30000 here, and we got 5000 here. We have another 25000 25, that we need to credit. And what is that going to be? That's going to be to our payable. In this case, it's going to be a note payable. Usually a long-term loan is a note, not an accounts payable. Accounts payable is more something you're going to pay in a shorter period of time. But for a longer loan, usually you would have to sign a promissory note that promises that you're going to pay that back. And that is why it's a note payable. So now we have $30,000 in debits and we have $30,000 with the credits. So we have that and I'm running out of space here, but we'll, we'll be okay. Um, we'll put a description here. This was our purchase of delivery truck. And we have one last transaction. I can check that one off. The last one occurs on January 1st. We performed a repair for a customer and received payment of $500. So we received cash because there's nothing to indicate that it was a promise to pay. We actually received cash. So we're going to debit cash because it's going up. So on January 1st, I mean the 5th, January 5th, we're going to debit cash. And that's for the $500. And we're going to credit an account for $500, and that's going to be a revenue account. So I'm going to indent and put revenue. And it might be more specific. It might say service revenue. It might be sales revenue. There, so some of these accounts might have slightly different names. Be on the lookout for that. But we know it's some sort of revenue account for $500. So we have our debits and credits balance, and this is for the... Um, repair services provided. Again, the description may vary, but you want to have some sort of description there. So now you have some idea on how to journalize transactions. Please sign up for my free newsletter, and that way you can get some updates as to different things that I'm offering to help you out. Now you've got an idea of how to journalize transactions, but there's so much more to know. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Thank you.